In today's lesson of Bike Service School, express clean of a trash bike cassette, the biggest challenge in the winter bike cleaning, a small experiment which shows that parking a bike is not that obvious. Przyjeżdżasz na parking, gdzieś pod sklep, nie ma go gdzie oprzeć. Jak go położysz na ziemi? Pokaż mi. I'm gonna show you what you should never do with your bike service stand and... Now there will be one controversial thing. It's time to begin lesson three. And how was your day, guys? <laughs> I had a great day on the bike. It's March and it wasn't really cold today, but right after the sunset, the temperature dropped below zero. And so all the dirt on my bike got frozen. Many of you, my friends, who participate in this bike service school all over the world will deal with muddy bikes in the spring. How to deal with your customer's bike if you don't really have much time or you don't want to charge a lot of money for cleaning it. Let's see how the bike looks like and what I did with it in three steps. High pressure washer is so handy. This is actually a mid pressure washer. I'm also going to show you how do I clean the bike full of spider webs and old bike in just a couple of minutes. But first, the washer. Pressure washer is no enemy to the bike. And for example, bike mechanics at workups, uh, cross country or downhill, they do use pressure washers. They are fast and they are very good in removing the dirt from in between the components. The most vulnerable parts on your bike are the dust seals on the damper, suspension fork and the dropper post and so you don't want to keep your gun close to these parts. You also want to be careful when cleaning the bike in the area of your headset bearings and on e-bikes on your switch when you switch on the bike. The drivetrain and the bearings on a good quality wheels are pretty good with the high pressure washer. There are also different guns and I'm using the extreme one and so some stickers have been damaged. Now all the future bike mechanics, the biggest sin you can do to your bike or your customer's bike is to assume that your bike is now clean and ready to store. No, you absolutely have to dry the drivetrain and loop the chain. Spinning your rear wheel fast will be a really good method for drying it. Don't leave water on steel parts overnight. And just as I promised you guys on the lesson 2, I am testing now the canola oil on all of my bikes and so far it seems to be a really good loop. Again, for those who make a good living from servicing bikes, teach your customers to loop the chain. Don't worry about selling less chains, you will gain more customers. If I didn't have much time to detail the bike, which are the areas I would definitely want to do. I will maintain the drivetrain, the damper, the suspension fork and the dropper post, which are the moving parts. And as I'm always telling you my students, it's not a rocket science, so whether you use a Brunox like I do or some other spray or lubricant which is good for the seals, not maybe WD-40, the basic one, you will do really good to your suspension and these moving parts. And because these dust seals have not been clean with the high pressure washer because I keep it away from them, that's why I do it now with the little brush you will definitely feel the suspension working smoother. It will do much more hundreds of miles without any servicing and there will be no stiction effect. And if you have a couple of extra minutes without going into the details, you can make the bike look beautifully in a couple of minutes. I'm applying a thin layer of my Supreme Biker protection all over the bike. Just remember to keep away any type of wax and lubrication from your disc brake rotors, the brakes, the rim brakes and the rims.
and six minutes and 25 seconds. As you can see, you don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning your bike even after such a muddy ride. But just remember, this is the first level. The bike just looks good. It will ride very well. But on the next level on our school, you will see more tricks. Now I'm going to show you how to clean the cassette from a trash bike in no more than two minutes. I'm before and after. As my audience already knows, non-sticky, clean drivetrain parts will wear much slower and will work better. Let's do the RD. Before we start to clean the bike full of spider webs, first, how to clamp your bike on a servicing stand. Hmm? Here is the first and the quickest method. The bike won't be very stable there, but if you just need to quickly check something on the bike, most of the saddles are designed to be hang like this. Method two is the most common one. If you plan to do a more regular service, you clamp it by the seat post. Here is what you should never do to your servicing stand. You never undo this knob without holding the bike because otherwise the weight of the bike can damage your bike stand. Teach it your people. First, hold the bike. Second, release the knob. Third, adjust the angle of the bike. And so you can fasten it right now without damaging these teeth. Not all of the stands have these teeth. This topic has a small one and if you're not careful, you can damage them very easily. This Super B is much better. Just remember to hold the bike. Be careful now, one of the three questions at the end will be from this part of the lesson. Is it a good idea to keep the bike in the horizontal position on your servicing bike stand? I myself will first see what the gravity does to the bike. This method will minimize the tension on these teeth on your bike stand and also the tension on your dropper post. This is a little too low, my back wouldn't feel comfortable working on the front wheel, so rising the bike just a little, not to the horizontal position, won't put too much tension on the dropper post, my bike stand, and I can work on the rear and on the front of the bike comfortably. And here is the third method you want to use if you need an access to your seat post or dropper post or you have a super light carbon dropper post which might not like to be clamped. You can use the sock but maybe a rack would be better. The basic principle here is that you don't clamp your top tube as strongly as you would clamp a seat post because the bike is actually hanging on it. Now I have access to the dropper post, I can mount a dropper post, I can also change the position of the bike in order to route those inner stupid cables. And the fourth method is to use the seat tube for clamping. Since we've learned so much about clamping the bike into the bike stand in this lesson, it's time for the spider webs. Spider webs. The rear wheel has already been cleaned in some of my previous episodes. This is the front one. There's lots of spider webs there. Once again, the rear one is clean, and this is the front one. Now I'm gonna prepare the bike for cleaning. After this quick preparation of my bike, I can also pretty quickly clean the drivetrain so that my rack for the frame and for the wheels will not get dirty when I touch any of these parts. It's quick, it's basic, the bike will look good and it will ride very well. The pedals are very handy on the bike when you clean the drivetrain. Here's a quick hack how to install them. No matter the side of the bike, you simply spin the cranks backwards and you thread the pedals in. It's 
going well and it's time for the water. And remember, this is the first level of our bike service school which is dedicated to the beginner bike mechanics or simply bike owners. And so I'm using here my car washing soap. You can use Whoa. dishwashing soap, it's okay. Once again, this is not a rocket science. The bike will ride good and look good. Let's check it out. I love such dirty old bikes because the before and after effect is amazing. If you're time crunch, remember to start cleaning with the moving parts. You can leave the frame, you can leave the lower legs, but the upper legs must be clean. I clean the spokes from the valve to the valve. Much better, huh? Now I'm gonna grasp the brush and go one step further. The bike looks 10 years younger, I haven't spent a lot of time on it, I haven't used any expensive cosmetics. And one more thing you never want to do on the bike stand. If you put an e-bike on your bike stand, and don't be surprised that even me, Supreme Biker, is talking about e-bikes, even though I'm not sponsored and really free to say whatever I want, you will be servicing e-bikes more frequently than ever. Remember that, if your bike if your e-bike is on the stand and you are removing just the rear wheel, okay, boom. Mm -hmm. Heavy bicycles and e-bikes will easily fall down when you remove just one wheel. You can of course set the optimal position between the bike and the legs of the bike stand. But the best way to do it is this. 600 watt hours, heavy. Also, if you have the e-bike conversion kit on your bike, you simply use the key in order to remove the battery. Some will slide up, this one will go to the side and your bike gets much lighter. Now, there will be one controversial thing. We've got a full suspension bike with a damper here and we need the access to the seat post, let's say. We cannot clamp it by the seat tube, there's no space, there's no space on the top tube. Can we clamp it, or at least hang it, by the dumper? I've seen some people shocked on one of my videos that I did this with a dumper. But, okay, this might seem a very bad thing to do for a dumper, but number one, we're talking about super light cross-country bike, and the video uh, that I did before with such a clamping of the dumper was the newest Merida N96, even lighter. Number two, I haven't clamped it very firmly. It's, it's just barely hanging on the damper right here. Number three, what do you do with the damper when you reassemble it? Don't you actually use a vise for it? Also, lightly, but you do. So if you feel it's not right to do it, don't do it. Have I ever damaged any of my dampers? 
No. Would I do it with the e-bike? No. Do I clamp it very strongly? No. I don't recommend it. I do it. It's time to talk about storing the bike. Can you store it horizontally? No, vertically. It's time to talk about storing the bike. Can you store it vertically? How to lean it against the wall? How to put it down on the ground? And let's start with a little video where I recorded people working here on, <laughs> on my uh, studio outside. I asked them, how would you put your bike if there was nothing to lean it against on the ground? It's not that obvious. Hey guys, let's say this is your bike, you're on the parking lot, you need to put it on the ground. How would you do it? I don't know. Show me that. Yeah, you need to park it on the ground. Is there a right and a wrong way to do it? Hmm. The pedals are too short. You should lean against the pedals, I think. Nah, it won't work. Let me ask you another question, guys. Is there a difference between laying the bike on its right side and the left side? That the derailers? Yeah, so we already know we should use the left side. What should you do with the pedal then? Okay, try to set it all the way up. And now you can lay it down. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's how you should do it. You see, this is the correct way to lay the bike down. The only parts that touch the ground is the handlebars, the pedal and the tires. If we do it with the pedal down, the bike will do crazy stuff. And if we put the bike on its drive side, then we are scratching the derailleur. So, left side, the pedal all the way up. Okay, now that we have that thing out of the way, let's start with storing the bike. This is the example of doing it badly. You don't want to lean the bike against the wall with the handlebars only, because the wheels will simply spin and the bike will usually move away of the wall, first scratching your saddle and then crashing down. Remember, if you have super light handlebars, uh, you might need to replace them if they are carbon. Uh, same thing with a road bike. Let me show you first. If you lean it against the wall with the handlebars only, it will do something like this. You can also lean it with the saddle, but my way to do it is to put the tire against the wall and then the hoods, not my precious brake levers. See, when the tire is leaning against the wall, it's also braking. This is the best way to do it. If you need to lean it against the wall, one contact point, the second one con contact point, this one being a handbrake at the same time. Now some systems. The easiest one is this. Road bikes will have a little bit of movement there. Very, very bulky tires will be, will be fitting there very tightly. And you might have some issues with uh, big brake rotors. Um, so just check that out if you're buying one of these. Uh, to be honest, I, I can put all of my bikes into these, no problem. Sometimes also long cage and huge redirailer for the 12-speed system, uh, 12 speed system might also be an issue. So sometimes you just need to shift it into the right gear. The second one, very nice. It's very similar to the basic one, but you have a nice thing here to park the bike. You can, you can park it there, park it there with the rear wheel or the front wheel. And then if you have a kickstand, you have no problem, like on this beautiful city bike, Himiway, this is the e-bike. And finally, vertical thing. First one, this is a stand with additional arm for the front wheel so that your bike can be standing uh, upwards. These are nice because you can actually put the, all of the bikes really close to the, to the wall. It's a swinging system. I like it. And if you have enough oil in, this, in the brake system, if you, if you have no issues with your suspension, I have never had problems with any bikes, SRAM brakes, Shimano brakes, road brakes on Ultigra. A couple of uh, road bikes I've stored like this for 
months, no problem. So you, should, you shouldn't be having any issues with that. Now let's move on to the questions. Question number one, it's an important one for all of us servicing other people's bikes. Can you clamp a bike to the servicing stand by a dropper post? Answer A, yes, you can. B, you can by no means do it. And C, some dropper posts will be okay with that and some can get damaged. Question number two. Why a horizontal position on the bike stand is not the best position for your bike and for the bike stand itself? And the third question is, if you don't have time for a whole bike cleaning after a muddy ride, name the parts of your bike you're gonna clean anyway. Thanks for being with me on the third lesson. See you in the fourth one.